sometimes the name of the game is absolute survivability above all else, and for such times Anvil offers the Terrapin. Unfortunately, the Terrapin is also advertised with an advanced, hard-hitting array of weapons intended to keep the most fearsome Vandal Raider at bay, but, spoiler alert, that description is misleading at best. I'm Farrister, and in this video I'll be reviewing the Star Citizen ship, the Anvil Terrapin. Star Citizen is currently in alpha testing, with the Terrapin as one of the flyable ships. It's described as a Pathfinder ship, with a penchant for scanning, and in line with my favourite Star Citizen ships, there is a second seat in the back, meaning you could bring a friend with you. For those who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you'll recognise the usual format for this video. I've split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the 80% of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1 – Ship Tour And moving to the port side in the middle of the Terrapin, you see the door is a deployable ramp. This is neatly disguised away into some of the armouring of the ship. Flowing through up the ramp leads into the main body of the Terrapin. Right at the front, illuminated by a nice red light, is a chair for the pilot, and at the back is a chair for the scanning station. This is the only room inside the Terrapin, and includes access to various components through some neat little storage racks. At the back there is a bed, and weapons racks for both crew members. There's a small microwave above the bed. There's also a door leading into a shower toilet. Clearly there's enough room for delivery crates, which I have in the Terrapin on this. Part 2 – Combat Performance So, starting with the loadout, it becomes very clear that the Terrapin is undergunned for its size. With a single nose turret sporting two size 2 weapons, defaulting to XJ2 distortion repeaters, the firepower of the Terrapin is considerably below other ships at this price point. Additionally, there are no missiles at all at the moment, and here lies the big challenge for the Terrapin. While the store page talks about a hard-hitting array of weapons to keep the most fearsome Vandal at bay, you're left wondering where those weapons are. That said, the size 2 shield generator is fairly beefy, plus the layout of the Terrapin is such that you'll likely not lose many parts compared to some other ships. And when armouring is properly introduced to the game, it's fair to assume that the Terrapin will do fairly well out of it. Here's the rub though, that the time to kill from those measly dual size 2 weapons is considerable. Even swapping out to different weapons, the firepower just isn't there when compared to dedicated combat platforms. So from a combat perspective, you're likely to end up feeling less like the Predator and more like the Prey. Part 3 – Handling and Visibility Sadly, this section doesn't get much better for the Terrapin, but it's important to reiterate, this is a ship that's all about being defensive. Starting with visibility, it's fairly limited. The cockpit is right at the front of the ship, which is helpful, but the arc of visibility is fairly constrained due to the armoured plating. That said, it's probably still better than the Freelancer, and does improve slightly with the gear down as some of the plating retracts. There are some very bright cockpit lights though, which do give a bit of glare. The Terrapin also includes a VTOL mode, which is somewhat helpful. It makes takeoff and landing much easier, and given that the Terrapin doesn't naturally handle particularly well, opens up the old Harrier trick of viffing by rotating the engines into VTOL mode and strafing up, 
thereby pushing for a more aggressive turn. In atmosphere, the Terrapin seems desperate to sink and handles a bit like you might imagine a flying brick would handle. Using the VTOL thrusters does act as a bit of a safety feature though, should you need to use it. The strong cooler performance also gives you a little longer in boost or afterburner. In a vacuum, things improve slightly, but the Terrapin remains slow to turn and the sort of speeds it operates at remain fairly low. One thing that goes well for the Terrapin is how easy it is to take off and land, but also how that feels. There's a definite feeling of transition between being landed and flying, and it feels very sci-fi. From a quantum drive perspective, probably as you might expect, replace the stock drive, it's slow, but the range is actually very reasonable, which makes sense for a scanning Pathfinder ship. Part 4. Operating Costs Thankfully, the Terrapin is very cheap to operate compared to other ships of this size. Expect rearming, repairing and refuelling the Terrapin to come in less than a thousand alpha UEC. As far as making money, those options are a bit more limited. Combat contracts are possible if you have a lot of patience. There's no cargo storage per se, so that rules out trading, but the internal space can be used for delivery missions, which the Terrapin handles quite well and more than makes up for the running costs. Part 5 – The Verdict It's safe to say that the gameplay loops that the Terrapin is supposed to excel at, namely scouting and scanning, aren't fully implemented yet. The idea of taking out your Terrapin to help somebody find valuable mining nodes or locate something really tiny using the strong scanners is awesome, but most of that gameplay doesn't offer much for the Terrapin right now. And the Terrapin is also fairly expensive, at 2.5 million Alpha UEC, or upwards of $220. The real downside here is that that's competing with some much more compelling offers, such as the Banu Defender, Drake Corsair, Constellation Andromeda, or the newly released Mercury Star Runner. And that's the big challenge for the Terrapin right now. Set against all of those ships, the Terrapin, which in the current patch doesn't do much, just doesn't feel worth it. Even the in-game price feels steep. I really hope in the future that the Terrapin gets more gameplay around it, because I really like what this ship stands for, and for a defensive-minded player, the idea of turtling up behind strong shields and armour is really appealing. If you're flying the Terrapin right now, please share in the comments how you use it. If you found this review helpful, you may also be interested in my review of the Banu Defender. Please also subscribe if you'd like to see future Star Citizen content. Thank you for watching.